What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Igmatica 2 Expert. Oh yeah guys, so last episode we ended up making a whole bunch of the terrestrial artifact thingies. What are these things called? Yeah, the terrestrial artifact. Uh, in order to really do stuff with this we had to make molten endurium and as we saw the molten endurium, does it show uh magma crucible i don't know any yeah this endurium blend we're trying to make it this way we need platinum in order to do that and we saw for us to get platinum we can oh you know what i pressed the wrong button i need recipe for that oh is this a recipe let's see we needed to pulverize eventually we'll get to this uh yeah we can pulverize platinum ore to get two of them or um what was the other one? It was the nether platinum ore to get three of those. So we're here in the nether right now. I just warped in, went to like a spot next to a lava lake, and we're trying to vein mine away from it. So this is the first vein mine that I did. See, there's some nether diamond ore, which is pretty cool, I guess. We don't really need diamonds, but nether platinum right here and nether platinum right there. Yes. So already, just on the very first vein mine, we got five of those. So that is what, 15 of the nether platinums? Yep, here is a couple more. So this is really the way you wanna go, as far as I can tell right now, in order to get, oh, I'm, I was like, what am I being mine? In order to get a large amount of the platinum, yeah, if you're trying to make, or I guess if you're trying to progress in the pack like I am, <laughs> this is pretty much what you'd wanna do. Okay, so in my offhand here, I did put, some nether rack so I can avoid this. Why can I not place that block? There it is. Okay, so yeah, anytime we get lava or whatever, I'm just going to be placing nether rack down to block it off so I don't burn myself. But yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab all the ores and stuff that I see while I'm down here. But yeah, as you can tell, lots of the nether platinum ore here, which is great. Yes, we won't have a problem with platinum at all. The other method we saw is that we can go and take a whole bunch of nickel, pulverize that, and get a 10% chance at the platinum. I feel like this is just way faster. It is gonna use a bit more food, and the other way we could just sift, or potentially set up an auto sifter in order to get the nickel ore, but yeah, I think this is probably the fastest method overall. Anyway, I'm gonna continue doing this, get a whole bunch of the platinum. We'll see if we can make a lot of the molten endurium is it endurium? Yeah, I think it's endurium. We make a whole bunch of the endurium in order to uh, upgrade the terrestrial artifacts into the litharite, and we'll be back, guys. All right, guys, so I made the tunnel, I don't know how long that is, maybe 100 blocks, maybe a little bit more, I'm not sure. Anyway, that's how long the tunnel is. We got over a stack of the nether platinum ore. I've just been mining every single thing that I see uh, along the way, so we got a bunch more nether quartz, some lapis, only two emeralds, those are very rare. Lots of nether diamond ore. Um, can you smelt those? I forget, can you smelt those into... Okay, the alloy smelter, I turned those into the regular ore. I don't know if we have a way, sag mill, macerator. Oh, a macerator turns that into five. That's actually not a bad way of doing it. Okay, crusher would turn it into six diamond dust. Probably we're gonna use the macerator for that, but the nether platinum ore, what I was curious about, is there a way for us? Okay, so you can get four per doing it that way. If we had a sag mill, which we still don't, <laughs> uh, we could do it that. Yeah, alloy smelter, and then those you can pulverize into two. So that give us four. Yeah, well, there's a few ways to go about it. Anyway, um, so we have a lot of resources now, which is great. It didn't take super long. Did have to use a bit of food, uh, as vein mining does eat a lot of hunger. We could probably explore this cave and try and get some more stuff before I head out of here, but uh, I think we're gonna take our earnings, head back to the base, start turning it into stuff that's useful, and hopefully make all that litharite, uh, yeah, all the litharite that we're looking for. Be right back, guys. All right, guys, so I got to looking at the nether ores. Yeah, and as it turns out, you can smelt the nether ore for two of the vanilla ore equivalent, and then you can take those and pulverize them. So we ended up getting nearly five stacks of platinum, which is absolutely crazy. If you take the one platinum nether ore and you pulverize it, you only get three. And I did that to the first one. I was like, wait a second. I thought there was a better way of doing it. So anyway, all the nether diamond ore, I smelted. 
We got two of the vanilla equivalent that I fortuned, and we got so many, so many diamonds. Absolutely nuts. Let's take a look. Diamond. So up to 502 diamonds. Those aren't worth anything now. Those are crazy. Uh, how are we doing on lapis? So we got 66 in there. If I put all this in here, we're up to 908. That's so much lapis that we just got. Iridium. Oh, there's also the charged Certus Quartz. I did go ahead and make myself this diamond wand. I figure, you know, it's about time. And now that we have that item repairer, right? We can just put our wand over here into this guy and repair it all the way back up to full. Uh, it does take a little bit of time because it's got a lot of durability. And unfortunately, it doesn't show anywhere on here what the durability is. But yeah, eventually that'll repair all the way up. Anyway, uh, so we got a bunch of charged quartz, just a little bit of emerald, some coal, and then of course the platinum, which we were absolutely looking for. So now that we have that, we can start looking at making endurium. And again, we're gonna do this method here. So we need three times the amount of lead and then we need all this resonant ender. So that requires us to have ender pearls, which we don't have a lot of. So next stop is I need to go to the end and just start murdering Endermen left and right. We do have looting three on our sword and we can take him down just a couple of hits. It's not a big deal to kill them. I might make one of those silly vanilla uh, Enderman traps, you know, where you just make a too high area and then put a three by three on top of it like this. So you aggro all the Endermen, look at them, they come to you and all you gotta do is just smack them around a bit with your sword. I think we might do something like that, but anyway, I'm going to try and get myself like four stacks of ender pearls so we can make ourselves a full stack of the, well, I guess a full stack of this recipe, which should end up getting us four stacks of enderium. Yep, that's what I'm looking at doing. So let me get to it and we'll be back, guys. Well, that simple vanilla mob farm worked out really, really well. I was able to get four stacks of ender pearls. I just put a chest on top of our magma crucible full of the ender pearls. We have it set to auto input enabled, and I just set the top of it to the input side, so it's just automatically pulling from the chest, melting them, and it's going into our fluid transposer. So I made two of these portable tanks. These things are rather inexpensive. We've seen these before, just three glass, copper, and then one of these redstone servos, so just two redstone and iron. Anyway, so all of that stuff makes a portable tank. That holds 32 buckets, so we just needed two of those for two stacks of the resonant ender. So yeah, we are just about there. Okay, so that's done. I do believe these do work as a bucket. So if we grab ourselves some lead, we do need three stacks of lead. Hmm, how are we gonna do this? So I'm going to pulverizer, auto output disabled, we'll do this. So this will get us uh, two stacks of pulverized lead that I can just redo this, or I can grab myself, I guess, half a stack more lead. We're going to need a total of three stacks to do what I want to do here. But anyway, I can just do this quickly with you guys. Uh, and then was it pulverized um, platinum? I think you needed the pulverized variant of that. We don't have that either. Let's stop this. We'll swap this out for this stuff. All right, so eight of those should be enough. Let's try this recipe here. So we grab the pulverized lead, some of this, then we use this, and there's Enderium Blend. Awesome. So that works really well. These portable tanks are fantastic for multi-bucket applications like what we're doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up, get the rest of this stuff pulverized so we can do what we're trying to do here, and we'll be back, guys. All right, that took a long time, but eventually our fluid transposer got the rest of our litharite crystals made. So I just made the four litharite blocks that we are going to need for the void or miner tier one. No, tier one, this guy. So we, yeah, we need four of those. We have that done. Interconnect is another thing we're gonna have to look at. Black concrete powder. Okay, none of that's like super difficult. And we're also gonna need, is it structure frame or is it, yeah, structure frame structure frame we need 24 of those so that's a two litharite crystals each so we have the 48 litharite that we're going to need uh iron ingot lapis and then interconnects again so black concrete plus these connectors or this modifier component so you can get black concrete powder plus a block of iron gives you four of those or 
which is the better way of doing it? Black concrete. Seems like this is probably the way we're going to want to do it. That's the cheaper method. Let's get back in here. Interconnect. So either way, oh, actually, yeah, either way, uh, use a little bit more concrete powder, some redstone. This is probably the way you're going to want to do it later on when you get all your automations going on. But for right now, I think this is probably the least expensive method. So that is a heck of a lot of tin signalum. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. So we are going to need uh, 24 of those. So that means that we are going to need a whole lot of signalum. 24 times 4 for uh, one part of that and then times 4 again. So 24 times 8, I guess. Oh my goodness, that is so much signalum. Then we're going to need that many blocks of tin. Woo! How much tin do we have right now? Not that much. Uh, we have some tin ore. We can always sift for more of that stuff. Okay, well, I'm going to start figuring out exactly how much of this that we're going to need. Because it seems like we're going to need a whole heck of a lot of that. So the goal is to get 24 interconnects. Yeah, are we going to be able to do that? I don't know. Induction smelter for the signalum blend. So destabilized redstone, copper, silver. I'll probably do the same thing. Make a full uh 64 recipes so we get four stacks of the signalum is that how much that we need i think we're gonna need more than that i might do this recipe a couple of times anyway let me get to it we're gonna make a whole bunch of stuff we'll be back guys so the amount of resources that we need in order to make what i'm trying to make is absolutely ridiculous uh we're probably gonna get enough tin at this point it looks like we need four sets of a stack and a half of tin in order to make all these different components. And then the same thing for the signalum. Well, I got all that stuff done. We ended up just being a little bit short on tin. So I went and I sifted a whole bunch more stuff. I just took all the tin that we got, converted it into the ore, and then I'm uh, pulverizing it and then furnacing it right now into where it needs to be. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to have enough. I did replace the chest on top of these things with slightly larger chests, even though there is a problem, or at least there was the last time I heard with this mod, if a chest is full and you try and shift click in there, it'll crash your game. But I'm only using this so I can put items in and then uh, get the smelted result out once again. Uh, so I think we're going to be okay. I'm noticing our system here has a lot of red lights on it, which is... Kind of understandable since we have a lot of different stacks of these ores in here. So much stuff. Uh, the nether quartz we could probably convert into the block. And then all these wood chippings we don't really need. I got those originally for the cardboard boxes. But I don't think we need that many of them. Anyway, so now that we have this stuff here. Let me go ahead and swap that out like so. That is all of the materials that we need. We did get a stack of black concrete at one point. It was a different type of chiseled concrete, so I chiseled it into the correct version, and now I think we should be about where we need to be. Um, I did make some augments for our machines here, the pulverizer, have all three augments in there, and same thing for the furnace. This is now using 1248 power, this one's using the same thing. Uh, and the pulverizer is slightly faster than the redstone furnace at this point. But anyway, uh, let's grab the rest of that stuff and put it into the system here. Oh my goodness, so much stuff, guys. <laughs> I feel like I've been at this for hours and hours. Um, so trying to sift all of that material got me thinking, okay? We need 10 ore pieces. So 10 ore piece. We can get either from sieving like we've been doing or from a heavy sieve. And it's you get less of it from the compressed gravel or whatever, Instead of getting nine pieces at a 20% rate, you only get seven at a 20% rate. Whereas if you were doing it on the sieve and you're doing it on the flint stiffened mesh, you'd get for every piece of gravel, a 20% chance of the drop. So it's less efficient, but you can use the compressed stuff. So I was thinking that was gonna be really cool if we take some of these sieves here and then if we can connect them together like we can with these, yeah, that'd be like really fast, especially since we have so much gravel being produced over here. What are we at to now? Man, 
I've used so much gravel out of here and now we're up to 216 of it. Like <laughs> I've been playing for a very, very long time. I think the last time we looked at that, there was about 50,000. That might've been last episode too. Um, so what I ended up doing, since that doesn't work, you can only do one at a time. These meshes do fit in there and they look a little weird. Oops. Um, yeah, it only, you can only do one at a time. So it's not really a great way of doing it. So I made two of them to see if you could sift multiple together. You cannot. Right. So I ended up making two more sieves here so we could have a multiple of 64. So I'm not doing six, 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 and then four, right? I want to like try and be more efficient about it. And that was all fine. We were doing eight at a time. And I was like, you know, we can do this faster. So I made eight more of these things and I put all the meshes in here. They all got the sieve efficiency and sieve fortune. Mm -hmm. So now we can do a full stack of gravel in four sieving operations. Well, I guess, uh, what is that? Hold down right click. So it does 16 at a time. Right. So that's a full stack. It happens pretty quickly. Now we can automate this. I think we were trying to mess around with this previously using a mechanical user. Uh, what mod is this? This is Creato. So if we look at the mod here, this is the one that's got the water wheel uh, and the auto sifter. So we've seen this before in a previous playthrough, how to hook this all up. But for right now, it's much faster for me just to sit here and right click and like watch a movie or something while that's happening. The only problem is I just got to keep filling up my inventory and I got to hold down the mouse button while that's happening. But anyway, we got ores under control now whenever we need something we can get a massive amount of that stuff i will want to go through and make the same amount of the diamond meshes but i haven't done that yet so now that we have all of this stuff done oh my goodness get back to here let's grab all of these different things and then this we want to make 24 of those interconnect things so we're trying to make structure frame tier one these guys yeah we need these interconnects so we are going to make these connectors. Oh, aluminum brass ingots. I knew I forgot something. All right, so we only need how many of those? 24, 48, so like a stack and a half, I think is what it was. Okay, so we need, I don't even want to do the math. What was the item? <laughs> it's aluminum and copper. Let me get back into here. It is copper and aluminum. All right, so aluminum. We don't really have that much. How are we doing on copper? And we got some of that. I'm just gonna make a whole bunch of this stuff, more than what we need aluminum. Let's do half a stack of that. That should get us a full stack of the aluminum processed. Put that through the pulverizer that's doing its thing. You see how fast the redstone furnace is. This is very, very nice. Okay, so now that we have that, we can go into our induction smelter, not that, this. Yes, I need to put the augments in here. Did I? I had extra ones, didn't I? Augment. Let's put those into the induction smelter and see if we can get that thing sped up just a little bit more. Okay, so it's charging up full of more power, which is great. Yeah, that should be going a lot faster. Let's go ahead and put the copper up here, and that should just automatically pull into it. Oh, are we, we're out of aluminum. Did I do it the wrong ratio? I did the wrong ratio. I did three copper to one aluminum. Dang it, so we need another stack of aluminum completely processed. <sighs> and so now that we have everything, we should be able to make these connectors, yeah? So there is one stack of them. Let's try and make a little bit more of these things. And there's a stack and a half. So if we do that like this, we now have 24. So now we should be able to make these interconnects like so. And there is 24 interconnects. Oh my goodness, guys. That is so much material to make this. Ah, all right. So lapis and iron. Lapis. And then iron. And we have everything else. We need the litharite. These guys here. And now we can make ourselves a structure frames. Awesome. Okay, so we have the structure frames. We still need to make the void or miner. All right, so this guy does require a diode, which I didn't even look at the recipe for this. Oh boy, iridium reinforced plate. Am I getting ahead of myself? 
I might be getting ahead of myself. Okay, so it can use Iridium from Thermal Expansion, which is fine. We do need to get ourselves uh, the Advanced Alloys, which is made through these different plates. Advanced Alloys, yeah, we don't have any of that, or the Mixed Metal Ingots. Okay, so there's a lot more crafting involved here. Let's try and get to the, the one laser lens. All right, we have to make two more interconnects. Oh, boy, so I have to make eight more of these things. Just what I thought was over. It's not over. Okay, so we need to make two more interconnects. We have that, a block of diamond, no big deal. I'm going to continue working on this stuff, guys. I know we're going to be able to get to where we need to be soon enough. Uh, let me continue on, and we'll be right back. All right, guys. So after many hours of trying to get this done, we are finally at the point <laughs> where we have the void or minor controller tier one. Awesome. So that is yet another part of this whole thing completed. So let's take a look here. Uh, we unlocked the gate environmental tech by getting, doing this lithorite crystal. I actually did that off camera, but we started that like two episodes ago or something. Anyway, so that's going to give us 16 mica or four structure frame tier ones or four lithorite solar cells. I'm not actually sure which one. Oh, it does give us an assembler too. I'm not exactly sure which one we should take the mica. Let's take a look at that. That would be something we'd have to get through the void resource miner. But if we look at the use for mica, we can take that. We can get an accuracy modifier, but we need pl platinum crystals. And we're going to need lawns crystals, whatever those are. Those come from, looks like we craft those. Well, that's not that bad, to be honest. Okay, what about the platinum? What does that come from? That comes from the tier three. So we won't be able to even make this until we get to the tier three. Uh, we need a rhodium for a piezo modifier. I don't think we're going to do that. That's only useful for the solar panels and only if it's raining on your solar panel. Like, it's completely useless, in my opinion. So ranged nanobot beacon. I mean, that's really far down the line if we're ever going to do anything. It looks like ultimate crafting. We will have to be collecting a bunch of this stuff at some point in the future. So it's probably not going to be worth our while to just take those unless there's something that we can do with them right away. I'm kind of just looking through here. Nanobot beacon stuff. I don't even know if we can make the nanobot saturation modifier. That's going to be really good. But Ionite comes from the tier four. Again, that's down the line quite some ways. Uh, night vision, luck modifier, jump. Anything else here, like immediately useful? Speed modifier. That could be useful, but we need a rhodium. Oh, that comes from the tier one. So the tier one produces both a rhodium and lithorite, I do believe. Yeah, so we'll get both of those. And we can choose which one we prefer to get the most of by using the green laser or the magenta laser. Okay. Or I guess the lens. Um... I don't know. It's one of those things like, which one do we do? Now, let's take a look at the structure frame. We just made a bunch of these, but does the tier two require that or is that a different recipe? It does require the structure frames. So each one of these, as we saw before, requires a lithorite and then it requires these connectors and those connectors require all that tin and signal and stuff. That would probably be the one that we're going to do. I think we're going to go ahead and take the structure frames. Let's claim those. We get ourselves the assembler so that will help us out uh that'll help us out assembling the void laser uh so i saw astral sorcery when i was in or not astral sorcery um thomcraft when i was in the nether i collected a nether brick and that completed this quest here so we've had lava on us we've had iron we've had obsidian so this is the infernal furnace We're, we haven't actually made that but we got all the parts together to make one so let's go ahead and claim that I was kind of poking through these quests and there was a few more. The scanner, I think we made a couple episodes ago. Let's take the reward from that one. Mechanism is nothing new. We do have the terrestrial artifact, so we'll take a loot chest for that one. Industrial foregoing, nothing new. Nothing about Tanya. Blood magic, RF tools, nuclear craft. Thermal expansion, we have four. So these kits I made so we could upgrade our different machines. Uh-huh. And then the Cinnabar we got from pulverizing a bunch of our gold 
I started processing some of this stuff. So we have 284 blocks. And as a byproduct, you get the cinnabar, which I wasn't paying attention. It automatically got smelted down into um, the mercury. I forget. I forget the, it's the thumb craft stuff, these little round quicksilver. That's what it is. So yeah, the cinnabar can get smelted into quicksilver if you're not careful. Uh, you do want the cinnabar because this can be used in the induction smelter, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so if you put that with like an ore, you can get three out of an ore as opposed to just the two. And then you also get rich slag, which is, I think that's important. Yeah, that's also another thing here. Cinnabar plus nickel gives you 100% chance for platinum as a byproduct. So you do want this stuff. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. Anyway, let's pop these. So we get Signalum, one whole block of Signalum. Oh boy. Uh, enhanced Building Guide. Okay, well, I'm not sure we're going to be needing this, but the guide is pretty cool. If you guys haven't seen this before. Oh, do you have, you have to give it a redstone signal, I think, for it to show up. Do we have a lever? Yeah, with that, you can make like a round circle. Just tell it the dimensions, and you can press like each of these different buttons to change the size. Make it bigger or smaller or narrower, narrower, narrower. Wow, that's a hard word. Or wider, <laughs> taller. Yeah, you get the idea. You can uh, change it to one of these buttons. You have to, you have to know which side you're pressing. One of these you can change it from like a sphere to a, oh, a cylinder, a cuboid, full cuboid, a dome. Yeah. Anyway, so a bunch of different options. That's kind of cool. If we do any like crazy building later on we might use that put that guy away all right let's continue on here what else do we get uh, a dev null all right well don't really need the dev null the dink null is like way better than the dev null uh framed blocks okay we've gotten that one before magical boomerang we've gotten that one before chicken celery casserole all right more food items and then an advanced solar panel that's actually not bad we could go put that upstairs and add that to our passive our passive energy generation. You know what? I never did switch this one out from leadstone, did I? I don't think that really matters. Let's see. Are we able to connect that on here? Or is this in the way? This stuff might be in the way. Anyway, I'll worry about adding that up here later. We'll add that to our collection of things that are just passively generating RF. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's not a bad collection of different things that we got here. Nothing exceptionally useful. Put that, that, okay, and that away. Awesome. So I believe that is all of the different loot chests that we have unlocked. And I was kind of looking here under bragging rights. It looks like the creative stuff has been unlocked. I don't remember if that was always unlocked. I felt like that was always grayed out like this stuff. But at some point, this stuff has become unlocked. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, we just got a few more tasks to complete here. I think only three more to unlock the bragging rights gate. Yeah, we do have to unlock Ender IO. That's going to be something that we're definitely going to want to do here in the near future. Um, anyway, let's get back to this. The digital guide, whoop, digital guide. There is still one more part that we have to do. Structure panel. Okay, so structure panel. We need 20 of these. More connectors. Mm. Okay. Well, <laughs> I tell you guys what. I have spent so much time here today making things out of tin, and we have yet more tin that we are going to need. We don't even have enough to do what we need to do here. We need 20 more of those connectors. So what is that? That is going to be 80 more blocks of tin. We're not even halfway there. Close to halfway, but not halfway there. I'm going to go ahead and call it here for today. I wanted to get the Void or Miner going, but I didn't realize just the amount of resources that go into this. It's absolutely crazy. We should look at getting our resource generation automated. But I think before we do that, I want to start getting Applied Energistics going. Like having to run over to IC2 area over here, and then run all the way over here to make some plates and then run all the way back to use a compressor. It's getting old. <laughs>
if we can just start automating this process so I can say, all right, just craft it and then I can just wait 45 seconds, three minutes, whatever it is, and everything's just happening, that's gonna be so much better. We'll be looking at that here in the near future. But anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.